Hey everyone, it's Mark. This is my recap for Pokemon Journeys episode 79, The Moon and Sun, Koharu and Haruhi. This was the 1164th episode of the Pokemon anime, and a relatively uneventful episode in my opinion. But as always, I'm here to break down every detail and give you my thoughts, so let's get into it. Before the episode even gets started properly, we can see that they updated the usual opening scene to include Go's Inteleon, who did not appear in this episode, but we will talk more about Inteleon later. The setup for this episode was pretty straightforward. Professor Cerise and his assistants talk about this place called the Eclipse Castle, where Umbreon and Espeon are revered, and there's about to be a big festival there because of an eclipse, so of course everyone is excited to go, especially Eevee, since it likes interacting with Eeveelutions. Our three heroes teleport over to Johto, and while Ash and Go are staring at the castle and wondering why it's so special, Eevee runs away and Chloe chases after it without the boys knowing. Then some old lady shows up and explains to them the history of this castle and how at one point the lord of the castle was attacked by his brother, who wanted to become the lord of the castle himself. This will of course tie back into the episode later. The old lady then reveals that she is the current lord of the castle, but because of the eclipse today, she's actually going to be stepping down from her position and handing over control to someone else. Who is that someone else though? Well, let's check back in with Chloe and Evie, and as you saw at the start of this video, Evie accidentally jumps off a cliff, but thankfully this Espeon Force saw this happening and was there to save the day. And these two evolutions belong to this girl who was praying to some shrine. This girl, whose name is Haruhi, looks exactly like Koharu, I mean Chloe. They decide to play a prank on everyone and swap clothes to trick them, but you can tell that this is Haruhi because of the flower that she wears in her hair. It's different from the one that Chloe wears. Haruhi explains that she is actually the one who is meant to be taking over as the Lord of Eclipse Castle today, and she and Chloe talk about their Eevee and evolution and blah blah blah. I did like this image though because you can tell who the serious ones are while Grookey and Eevee look so cute just playing around. The group heads over to some other part of the castle where they talk some more about the backstory of the castle and the Lord and his brother, but it's time for the festival to begin. I mean, they call it a festival, but it's more like a coronation ceremony, I guess, and Haruhi has to go get ready. We then cut over to this rando who is spying on the castle from a distance, and he says something about a long humiliation ending today. Hmm, I wonder where this is going. While our three heroes are headed over to join the party, Chloe realizes that she should probably change out of Haruhi's clothes, so she runs off on her own, and immediately gets kidnapped by that weirdo we just saw a second ago. Of course. Evie may not have been able to stop this kidnapping, but she is able to get Ash and Go's attention, so they all run away to help find Chloe. Meanwhile, the ninja guy is back, and he attacks Haruhi, although he is confused since he thought he just kidnapped Haruhi. The search for Chloe is not going very well, and Evie is very sad but then Evie inexplicably is able to sense where Chloe is. I have no clue what was happening here. I mean, I know Chloe and Evie are close, but since when was this kind of thing possible? Back over at the festival ceremony thing, the ninja guy blackmails Haruhi by threatening Chloe's safety, and just as she's about to name him as the new Lord of Eclipse Castle, Chloe and everyone else comes busting in, and Evie is taking no prisoners. She just immediately tackles Katsuki, the ninja-looking guy. Taking a step back for a second, it felt very abrupt for Chloe to suddenly be free and for them to be back at the castle, but whatever, I guess we didn't have time for the scene of them freeing Chloe in this episode. Ash and Go are ready to teach this punk a lesson, but Haruhi requests that they leave the battle for her and Chloe. The battle ensues, and it doesn't take long for Chloe to use Copycat, but I do want to point out that they more than likely reused the Copycat animation from episode 48 because Evie had a yellow aura around her for a little bit, like it was copying Spark. But in the very next frame, it's got this pinkish purple color for a psychic type move. Anyways, this battle is nothing to write home about, although Espeon does use Wish, and this was actually the first time ever that Wish was used in the anime, even though it's been around since Gen 3. Wild. Oh yeah, remember how this whole festival is based around an eclipse happening? Well, that conveniently happens right now, which presents Haruhi with a big chance, as she calls it, because this will somehow power up both Espeon and Umbreon at the same time. Okay, not sure I understand that logic too much, but either way it works, as Katsuki is defeated, and instead of arresting him or something like that, Haruhi explains that they should actually just be friends, since Haruhi's name is based off Sun, Katsuki's name has Moon in it, and since they are descendants of the Lord and his traitor brother from way back in the day, they're basically siblings. After tying things back to the story that we heard at the beginning of the episode, Haruhi makes the big announcement to everyone that she is now the Lord of the castle, but Katsuki will be there too, and everyone is excited. 
Haruhi then goes into this monologue about how making up for each other's flaws and supporting each other is so great, which she talked about earlier in the episode 2 when she was describing Espeon and Umbreon, and this was basically the big message from this episode, how wholesome. The episode wraps up by Eevee being given this Espeon and Umbreon pendant, I guess to go along with the water stone that it got when it met Vaporeon. Then the narrator asks what could be in Chloe and Eevee's future as we fade to black. I'm giving this episode a 5 out of 10 rating. No bingo updates this week, and really I was not too enamored by this episode, I couldn't really decide what rating to give it, but settled on a 5 after comparing it to some recent episodes that I gave similar ratings to. I don't know, but was anything in this episode that interesting? In my opinion, no, because the plot was so straightforward and predictable. They set up the backstory about the old lord and his brother, and we saw the exact same thing play out again. Chloe having this weird doppelganger was certainly a twist, but that alone isn't bumping this rating up for me. Ash and Go were basically bystanders this entire episode, which is fine, I don't have an issue with them taking a back seat, but I also feel like Chloe didn't actually do much or learn anything from this episode either. Like, the focus of this episode was not on any of the main characters, it was on Haruhi and Katsuki, but their story wasn't even that interesting or entertaining to me, and we are more than likely never going to see either of them again. Honestly, this episode had basically nothing important happen in it, save for Eevee meeting another two Eeveelutions. Outside of that, I think this episode could have not existed, and the series would be exactly the same. That being said, this does check the box for Espeon and Umbreon appearing, so that's three Eeveelutions down. Of course, as fans of the anime tend to do, we all probably had higher expectations for this storyline than this. I mean, sure, it was probably a little more much to expect people like Sakura and Gary to fulfill the roles of Chloe's mentor on Espeon and Umbreon, but that definitely would have been way cooler than what we got in this episode. I guess Chloe's just gonna meet new characters along the way with her and Eevee learning about the Eeveelutions, but I mean, wouldn't we all have preferred a Gladion return instead of this episode? I think the next episode will be much more exciting. Go is taking on his first trial mission, and his task will be to collect the golden scales of Volcarona, which is exciting because that means Go will have to track down a shiny Volcarona if he wants to find a golden one. Oh yeah, and Inteleon will be there too, cool. For some reason, Asahi will also be there, along with her Rapid Strike Urshifu that we were all predicting she would have, but now it's confirmed. I'm not too sure what else will happen, but I do think Go will successfully complete his first trial mission. Let me know what you guys think will happen in the next episode down in the comments, as well as what you thought about this episode. Thanks so much for watching this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.